Hello, and welcome back to the Cybersecurity Crash Course for Small and Mid-Sized Businesses. In this lesson, we're going to talk about vendor security. You've probably heard about the target breach. Everyone talks about this when they talk about vendor security. And yes, Target is a much larger organization than you, but I think there's still some lessons that can be taken no matter what size your organization is. So in 2013, Target was breached because a vendor organization that worked on their air conditioning, hackers gained access to that company and used that access to, for, into the HVAC company to pivot into Target. And that resulted in the leaking of millions of records and payment info for their customers. That breach caused Target's revenue for quarter four of 2013 to drop by 46%. That's a big lesson for your organization. While it might not cost you $61 million like it did Target, there is still a risk and a likelihood that you will experience a revenue decrease and there will be money that you have to pay as a result of a breach. So this is lesson eight in our 12 part cybersecurity crash course for small and mid-sized organizations. If you have not watched the previous lessons, be sure that you go back and take some time and watch them. There's tons of valuable information. We've done lots of demos so far, and you'll really enjoy and find the information useful, I believe. Finally, before we get into the lesson today, be sure that you get the companion guide. You can find that at the link right there. Download that guide. All of the links we talk about all of the tools we talk about are referenced in there. You can go get them. There are some exercises you can do in there and some other great tools for you to use to secure your small and mid-sized organization. So when we're talking about vendor security, the very first thing that you have to think about is what do your vendors have access to? In the case of Target, those HVAC company, that company rather, they had remote access into the network so that they could monitor and work on the AC units. That remote access was to the network. And because they had access to the network, the attackers were able to pivot off of that access further into Target's network and into their payment card um, segment of their network. And it's very likely that your vendors have access to sensitive information. So you have to think about, you have to verify, do your vendors actually take the responsibility, take the initiative, and do they actually do a good job securing their own computers and their own network? If you're going to trust them to have access to your network, are they securing their own network? And how do we do this? How can I verify this? And that's what we're going to talk about. Next, do the vendors, do any of your vendors connect to your network in any way? If they connect to your network to remote on, to provide some kind of support, to remote on, to fix issues, if they have access to your network, do they come to your network and connect to your network for meetings or doing work. Um, those are all things to think about. Maybe they come to work on some kind of machine you have or some special server you have and they come actually physically to your network. They still are connecting to your network in some way. And does that access, does that potential lack of security of their own computers, that potential lack of security of their own networks, does that put your customer's information at risk in any way? If yes, Vendor security is something you need to take very, very seriously and give it the importance it deserves. The first key to successful vendor security and mitigating that risk of your vendors is get contracts in writing that spell out very specifically what your agreements are, what security controls you believe they have in place, do they confirm they have in place, and spell that out as much as possible. You're probably going to get pushback from your vendors. They don't want some of this in writing, but be sure you do this. There is a lot of legal benefit to this. If something happens, that is the fault of your vendor. You can go back to a contract and say, this is what you agreed to have in place, and it can cover you. This could help with insurance claims, who has to pay for a breach of information if it results from the vendor that comes to your network, etc. Getting it in writing get legal counsel, get technical counsel, getting that in writing, those contracts is going to save you a lot. 
be sure that you include things like the provisions for security. What you expect your vendors to have, what is the minimum security controls they have to have in place. And a great example of this is HIPAA business associate agreements. Business associate agreements under HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or healthcare providers, organizations that handle healthcare data. A business associate is an organization that does work with PHI, Protected Health Information, on behalf of the covered entity or the organization that has to abide by HIPAA, right? So a business associate is any organization that creates, receives, maintains, or transmits PHI on behalf of the covered entity. And these organizations that do this for the covered entities have to abide by the HIPAA regulations, the security regulations, just like the covered entities do. And they are required by law to have a contract in place, a contract that says, this is the minimum security controls you have in place. You agree that you are going to abide by HIPAA regulations, the security rule, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Get those provisions written out in the contract. Next, be sure that you have a plan in your contract so that you can evaluate and you can update security controls as threats change. What is good for today is not going to be good in five years. Technology and security is changing so fast. So in your contract with your vendors, in those agreements that you have in place, be sure that it is allowed in there that this contract will be updated or upgraded somehow in X amount of years or X amount of time. As threats change, it, it is fluid and it can be changed. Finally, ensure that critical security controls are non-negotiable. Security controls like strong passwords, multi-factor authentication, things that are absolutely critical to securing an organization, those should be non-negotiable. No, under no circumstance should the organization, your vendor, be allowed to ignore those security controls. And when it comes to compliance, be that HIPAA compliance, be this PCI compliance, be this GOBA compliance, Grim Leach Bliley Act, whatever kind of compliance you're dealing with, your vendors who have to abide by those compliance regulations, verify that compliance. Do, don't take their word for it. You can't trust because they say it, that's the way it is. Be sure that you do your own due diligence, your own probing to figure out if they are actually doing what they say they're doing. This requires establishing a process that will allow you to confirm that the vendors abide by their contracts. And at the end of this lesson, we're going to take a look at this. We're going to talk about vendor assessments and some of the questions you can ask to help you gauge how strong their security is and if they are actually abiding by their contracts. But again, never take your vendor's word for it. Don't believe what they say. It's kind of like turn signals, right? A turn signal simply means it works. It doesn't necessarily mean the person is turning that direction. And that is the same with your vendor's word. You unfortunately cannot trust it. There's too great of a risk and too much at stake to simply take their words for it. How can you protect your business when you do have to work with vendors? When you do have to allow vendors to connect to your devices, to have remote access at times, to run applications that provide remote access, how can you secure your business? First of all, control access. Access control is very, very important. Access control needs to be on a need to know basis. Just like in your own organization, hopefully you're abiding by this principle, the principle of least privilege. An individual should have the least amount of access that they need to get their job done and no more. We've talked about this with zero trust in previous videos. This is the way it has to be done so that should an individual be compromised, an attacker has limits how far they can pivot what they have access to. Control access to your databases, things where locations where data, PII, PHI, all of that toxic data is stored, have strict access controls in place and set time limits. If a vendor needs to remote on, say to a server to do some kind of work for three days, and that requires you to set up a domain account as an example for that vendor, when those three days are up, disable that account. Don't leave it live so that if they are compromised, if they used a weak password, someone else could use that access to breach your organization. And the same goes with things like VPNs. 
if you have a VPN and you give a certificate to um, a vendor for some kind of work that they need to do, revoke their access to that VPN, revoke their VPN account when that work is complete. This requires vigilance, it requires discipline, and in some many cases, this requires documentation. When a vendor begins work, create a document outlining the access that has been given to them and create alerts or some kind of reminder, create a calendar event to remind you when this time limit is up to revoke this access so it doesn't get overlooked. Next, be sure that you take steps to safeguard your data. One of the best ways to safeguard data is via encryption. If, it, if data is encrypted, even if a bad actor, even if an attacker gains access to it, they still can't read it without the encrypt decryption key, right? So encrypt your data and keeping all of your data in one central place is something to consider. There are definitely benefits to this. There are benefits to having all of your data stored in one location, but there are also risk. So if you have segments within your business, if you have different ways that your business makes money, um, it might be worth considering splitting that data out and having strict access controls in place. And again, this is something we talked about when we talked about zero trust. If you have two HR departments, as an example, one in Germany, one in the United States, the HR department in the United States doesn't need access to the data that HR in Germany does. So segmenting that out provides great benefits when it comes to mitigating the risk of the compromise of that data. If an attacker compromises someone in HR in the United States, there's no way they can get access to that HR data in Germany. And if you're working on a need to know basis, they're likely not going to even be able to have access to all of that HR data in the United States. So segmenting your data and encrypting it is key. And finally, secure your network. Security is all about having a layered approach. No one security control is going to keep an attacker out. There's always a way around a security control. Passwords, I can fish them. Multi-factor authentication, I can social engineer them. Encryption, I can get the decryption key somehow. Whatever controls are in place, there are ways around it. So layering your security makes many, many more steps for the attacker, likely causing them to give up in the meantime. And if not, it gives you more of an opportunity to find them. So a layered approach of security in your network, things like using strong passwords, not reusing your passwords, use one password per account, per system that you're using. This will require using a password manager as you probably won't be able to remember all of them and limit login attempts. This will stop brute force attacks, password spraying attacks, limit logins, and finally use multi-factor authentication. Those are some of the most basic security controls you can have in place, but be sure that you still are securing your network. So this brings us to the topic of what do you do when your vendor has a breach that affects you? First of all, if they have not already, you should contact law enforcement. And in some cases, even if they have, it still might be required for your organization to contact law enforcement of some kind. For HIPAA, for example, if you have a breach, if your vendor has a breach of your PII, you are required to report that to OCR, the Office of Civil Rights, on a certain time period, within a certain time period. So first thing is, if necessary, contact law enforcement. Second, after this incident is over, before everything quote unquote resumes to normal, be sure that the vendor has actually fixed the vulnerability that led to the breach. And this should be something you have in your contract so that if a vendor has a breach, you have a right to know what that vulnerability was that was exploited. You should have the right to some kind of report to tell you what happened so that you can be sure that they have actually fixed that before everything resumes to normal. And depending on the industry you're in, depending on the type of breach that your vendor occurred, that happened to them, how it involved you, you may have to notify your customers. So before we wrap up, let's talk about vendor security assessments. This is a great way to gauge your vendor security practices to figure out if they really are taking security seriously, what kind of controls they have in place, are they actually abiding by your contracts, 
etc. So let's go take a look at a sample vendor questionnaire that will help you assess this. Conducting a vendor security assessment is a great way to be sure that your vendors are taking security seriously and that, they, that they're not introducing greater risk to your own organization. So this is a vendor security assessment questionnaire that is provided free by the Vendor Security Alliance. You can download this for free yourself, but I wanna show you some of the questions they ask that you can apply to your own organization's vendor security assessments to help you improve the security of your vendors. So there's quite a few tabs here, but if we go over to the service introduction, the form requests some basic information about your vendors, which is obvious. And then we see the core security controls. And we see this broken into the categories here. We have data protection and access controls, policies and standards, proactive security. And then we see the questions. So data classification, describe the customer data you require to provide your service. Uh, what kind of personal information, financial, confidential, and government data. And then it requests that they upload their data classification matrix, including definitions, access restrictions, and minimum control specifics for your service. And they can provide a description and links to those documents there. Encryption, how do you encrypt customer data? Please upload relevant documentation. Authentication, and it goes through all of these categories. Proactive security, how do you test the security of your network applications, third party assessments, etc. We look at reactive security. How are they monitoring, alerting, compliance? There's a ton of great information and questions you can ask. Now, you might not want to use all of these. You might want to break out certain of these. You might want to add to this. That is entirely up to you. This is a great resource provided by the Vendor Security Alliance. Then we skip over to the Privacy tab, and there are some questions here about privacy, um, the types of information that's collected. Are the person employees who handle this information trained at least annually. Again, you know what we say, annual training is not enough. It needs to be kept top of mind. Um, then we have some questions about GDPR, other definitions, and some legal terms. And it, this is just the core vendor security assessment. They have another complete vendor security assessment that goes into a lot more detail. And you can check that out. It's a great resource. I highly recommend that you go download these and begin implementing them into your vendor selection process. So you can be sure you're choosing vendors who are taking security seriously and are not adding more risk to your organization.